Listen, if you look at the Warriors in, in the Kings, it was not the officials because both teams shot 23 free throws. I'm sorry, Kings fans. It wasn't the Zebras. Neither team was great from three-point land. Rebounds were even. Total turnovers, fast break points, points in the paint, fouls. Um, yeah, it was Steph. That game was Steph. It was a classic Steph Curry moment. No Draymond Green, no Gary Payton. Two best defenders gone. You're going to have to rebound better, and Steph's going to have to take over. And he, with some help from Andrew Wiggins, a little bit of a collective with the Kamingas and the role players and the Moody and the Jordan Poole. I don't know what it is exactly, but role players tend to disappear on the road and um, do very well at home. Maybe they're overwhelmed by the loud crowd when they're 21, 22 years old. But Steph Curry, when he is rolling at the Chase Center, it is different than any star in my life other than Michael Jordan in Chicago. When Michael Jordan and Steph Curry are doing their thing at home, acrobatic, every play's a highlight, it energizes the crowd. It's not basketball or it's 50% basketball. It's Cirque du Soleil. It's trapeze. And, and I'll say this, that is not to say that Kareem wasn't great. But Kareem hitting another stoic skyhook or Malone and Stockton with another pretty pick and roll, KD with a mid-range jumper, Larry Bird with a tough, gritty 27. No, it's not any of those. It's not even the great Kobe Bryant getting the ball mostly in one or two spots for his fall away. No, that's not what it is. Michael Jordan and Steph Curry, it's different. It is highlight real stuff. It is spectacular. Steph Curry makes layups look unique. The floaters, the 28-footers, things are off balance, the Globetrotter-esque ball handling, and that crowd in Chicago and that crowd in the Chase Center reacts differently. 14 years watching it, I'm still in awe of it. There is nothing in my life watching basketball that feels like this. I don't care if it was the Boston Garden and Bill Russell blocking another shot or Kareem with another sky hook. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Larry Bird with another gritty 27 and a couple clever passes. Every Steph basket feels spectacular. Everyone's a YouTube highlight. And their backs were up against the wall. You can't blame the refs. They both shot the same number of free throws. You can't blame anybody else. De'Aaron Fox was good. Sabonis was what he always was. This was Steph saying, I'm going to be the best player on the floor in a collection of a bunch of really good elite basketball players on the planet. He took it over. For some reason, there's still a begrudging respect by many for Steph, but that was a Jordan-esque spectacle last night. Listen, uh, Looney doesn't give you many points. Uh, Draymond was out. So was Peyton. Clay Thompson had a bad night. It was Steph, some Wiggins, and guys playing way over their head defensively. I didn't know if they could beat Sacramento without their two best defensive players. Sacramento led the NBA in scoring. But uh, the effort and the hustle, Steve Kerr said it during the game, this was Steph and an attitude. And uh, it is interesting. They are so bad on the road. And so dominant at home, there's nothing quite like it in the NBA. So um, one of the things I've discovered, it's so easy to be an NBA official from your couch or on Twitter. Everybody, I swear to you, is just, just the best. It's so easy on your couch to officiate. So Philadelphia beat Brooklyn narrowly in a fantastic game. I'll talk more about the game later. But there was a lot of controversy about the officiating, and I agreed with the two big calls. First of all, Embiid got just a flagrant one. I agreed here for kicking Nick's Claxton. But Claxton was straddling Embiid. He got in his space. It's an often used junk move in the NBA where you get over a man and try to debase him. You have a right to give yourself and protect your space. If you get in my personal space, I have a right to create it at a restaurant, in a mall, in a parking lot. You get in my space, I have a right to create my own space. That's all he was doing. He was being straddled. It's a move you had Pippen and the Knicks. It's had it for years. 
You are beneath me. I'm straddling you. Look at Claxton. Two steps forward to make sure he can make eye contact and get over the midsection of Joel Embiid. So Embiid is going to get a flagrant one for kicking, but the referees, in my opinion, rightly gave him a break, no flagrant two, because you do have a right to some degree to create space. Then there was James Harden who got thrown out. People lost their you-know-what on this. James Harden wasn't creating space. He was being guarded. Nobody was straddling him. James Harden punched a guy in the groin. That's not an invasive relationship. That's a player guarding another player. Claxton hovered, tried to intimidate, straddled. Watch Nick Claxton, who could have moved over Embiid's feet takes two steps forward to get right over his midsection to stare down at him. This is just guarding somebody. You see this at the YMCA. That's guarding somebody. Guarding somebody tight, forcing Harden, who likes his space. Harden can't do that. That got a flagrant too. He gets ejected. I agree with that. I know it's so much easier on Twitter and on your couch to be a great official, but I'll just put it this, the simplest way to put it. Invading space gives you the freedom to create some space. Now, the kick gets a flagrant. The NBA is not saying, hey, you can just freewheel and kick any time. But they're going to give you a little bit of a breathing room on creating space on a junk move by Claxton. That's different. Guarding somebody is not invasive. Even if you're right up against them, you are guarding them. They're not on the floor. It's live action. So if you watch that video again from Nick Claxton, when Embiid's on the floor, he makes an aggressive move. Now watch it closely. He doesn't just move past him. He takes steps. Now watch it again from the, the floor camera. He makes an aggressive step to straddle him right there. Extra big step to straddle him and make a point. You can say, well, it's kind of either. No, 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 it's not. That is a junk move that guys do in basketball. Go back to Knicks Bulls years ago. It's just like Draymond. If people are comparing this to Draymond, the NBA told you in its press release that Draymond Green's suspension was due in large part to his resume. The league told you that. It's called reading their words. The, the NBA put it in their release that his history and resume, MB doesn't have this resume. He doesn't have this resume. So I, I know it's so easy, but in this case, I agree with both. If you walked up to me and get in my face and, and you make it totally uncomfortable for me, I don't have a right to clear it. I don't have to create, you say, what about Harden? No, Harden's different. That's basketball. I'm guarding you close. But when I'm on the floor and you take a step and straddle me to look down on me, you know and I know he could have walked around him. He could have stepped back. He chose to walk forward. It wasn't momentum. That was a step Nick Claxton chose to take. So there you go. By the way, Embiid, it was a physical game. It was a great game. It, 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 I'm telling you, some of these old school basketball games with pushing and shoving, y'all complain you don't like the regular season. Well, because they don't play hard. The, now, when the playoffs come around, this is what basketball looked like mostly in the 80s and 90s, although back then you could use hand checks and forearms. But this is what playoff basketball looks like. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.